next speaker this evening is Nancy Shabbat. Now, Nancy makes pottery travel mugs and guides people during soul work sessions to discover their fullest potential in life. She loves walking a black lab named Onyx, biking around the inner city, and living life in and out of her meaningfully crafted tiny house. I'm excited to hear about this. Please join me in giving Nancy a warm welcome. I had the honor of participating in a sweat lodge ceremony at the Pecani Nation near Pincher Creek. When I stepped inside the lodge, I was in awe of the generosity of the beautiful people offering sacred space to me, and it was incredibly familiar. You see, my parents were aid workers overseas when I was growing up, so I got to experience many different styles of home and hospitality. I was poured a cup of hot chai by a Pokot mama in Kenya and offered noodle soup in high rises in China. I can see that the opening up of a home and hospitality is as universal of a language of love. In my experience, home can happen anywhere, and most importantly, it must start within each of us. I have lived in over 30 homes in my 33 years. In my junior high years in Kenya, I went through a period of time where I moved every three months into a new dorm room with new roommates. This girl has inhabited many spaces. One of my favorites was my 1975 Dodge camper van that I named Olive. <laughs> she was olive green and reminded me of your old Auntie Olive, who was loud and persnickety, but also large and loving, and a great place to snuggle into. Olive was a home for me for the latter part of my 20s. I had a place of my own amidst all the transients during that time of life. I could be parked in the bush while tree planting, camping at the beach with friends, or offering counseling out of it in my church parking lot in downtown Vancouver. I felt like a turtle who always has her home on her back. Good old Olive had so much space, and together we offered hospitality to people from all walks of life. One of my moves took me to Australia, where I learned about the bower bird that collects blue objects and makes a nest out of them. They might use blue flowers or drinking straws or milk caps, and with this rare and unusual nest, the bird seeks to woo its mate. Five years ago, I was going through a crisis of belief. I was overwhelmed with how abnormal my life was. I was 28, I was not married, I was living in a community house with four other people, well, 4.5 if you count the baby. I didn't have a 9 to 5, and I was trying to make a go of it with my pottery business and life coaching practice. I feared that people in my life, especially my family, didn't understand me and thought I was making unwise decisions. I was stuck in the limiting belief that I had to wait till I was married to fulfill my dream of having a cool house, of making a home. I was sharing this fear with my own life coach, when all of a sudden I saw an image in my mind of that Australian bird obsessed with blue. I realized my life is very much like the bird's nest. My lifestyle is not fashioned from traditional building materials. My home and vocation are rare and unusual, but they are also structurally sound and beautiful. The bowerbird makes a nest first before it has a mate, and I realized I also should make a home in myself first. Out of that epiphany, I have leaned more and more deeply into living life at home and who I am, rather than in what others view as success. There are days when I question going against the flow, but I come out of those days grateful to be me. I love holding out hope to the next generation. Hope that it is possible to live life centered around what I'm most passionate about. I now have a life coaching practice that does just that. I love helping people listen in to what makes them unique. How can we live at home and who we are? How can we share our gifts with the world? I love to dig into these questions with my clients. And sometimes I even get to do that while making pottery with them. I've named my business Centered. And I love how that action is important for both the making of pottery and in paying attention to our deepest self. My latest invitation has been to drive a bus that takes people from the mustard seed shelter 
out in the industrial area of Calgary, into the downtown core. The daily activities of folks sleeping at the mustard seed are structured around accessing agencies and resources in search of work and a home of their own. The morning bus ride might be the last experience of hospitality that they'll experience on their way into a harsh city where they'll likely feel rejected most of the working day. It's been a fun challenge to transform a school bus at 5 a.m. into a warm and nurturing space. I'm up for that challenge. It's what gets me up so early in the morning. I ended up letting go of Dear Olive to make room for my new house on wheels, Margo. In January of 2014, I decided I had enough of moving into all different kinds of spaces. I was ready to settle down on my terms. The tiny house movement caught my attention and seemed like the perfect solution. I could afford my own home and live within my means while being ensconced in this loving community in my friend's backyard. This week, actually, marks a year now that I've lived in my own home. This amount of time is a record in and of itself. I celebrate that this particular home was made with my own hands and help from friends and family. It's been a gift to fully inhabit this space and design it with hospitality in mind. When a person moves every few months, there isn't a strong draw to painting walls or putting up art. But this house is mine to do what I want with. So I've installed mosaic murals and symbols of who I am and where I've come from all over it. This house is as unique as me. What I've learned from all of this is that home is not about the size or the structural roof and walls, no matter how beautiful your house is. It, I didn't build a house so I could keep up with the Joneses. I did it because I'm at home in myself, and I want others to be inspired to live at home in their uniqueness too. I built it because I realized the importance of being able to extend hospitality from a physical space of my own. One day, I dream of having a retreat center with many tiny houses, where people can get away from the city and listen into who they really are and what life looks like when they're centered and at home in themselves. When we all get clear on that, I believe that the whole world will truly be a loving home for all of us. May it be so.